Looking for a sign on the mind or a cycle time. Buried in the memory, hiding deep. What does it to feed? And suddenly, caught in the light, half alive under watchful eyes. Fun for fun, you think always on the run, riding with the same sun, chase your fame, you know Hello everybody, and welcome to CS302. Hope everybody's doing good, and I hope the connection's good. Last time we were on Wi-Fi, so it might have been a little spotty. Uh, this time I'm actually not going to record locally, which I actually I didn't do last time, because uh, 
it lacks a, the stream. I noticed that with my 202 class because I was like, oh, I forgot to record locally. So I started recording locally for 202 and then like the stream, just, it went down. So uh, yeah, we'll stick to just uh, live. So if for any reason the, the stream cuts off, then uh, let me know, then I can repeat myself. So that, uh, cause I am going to be downloading the Twitch stream and then uploading that to YouTube later tonight. Uh, great. I'm glad that it looks good. All right. So today we are still talking on trees, but we are done with ABL trees. So we are moving on to talking about something known as heaps. And specifically, we're going to be doing binary heaps because there's things known as binomial heaps, which you learn probably in analysis of algorithms. And uh, they can get pretty, uh, pretty, pretty tricky to do. But binary heaps are on the other side, pretty simple to do. At least simple because you've already done things like ABLs and traversals and building trees, and you know you're experts on trees now. You're you're Bob Ross, like tree expert drawers and whatnot, right? So, yeah, I think that uh, this shouldn't be a particularly hard subject. But either way. Uh, you know, we are going to be spending, is it one or two days on this? Well, I have one day scheduled on this, but, you know, if we need more time, we can spend more time next next uh, next week. So, yeah. All right. So, let me go ahead and start by uh, kind of introducing to you as to why heaps and why now and what they are and what they're useful for. And specifically why we're doing binary heaps. Well... That one you can kind of suspect because we've been talking about binary trees and heaps are just a tree with a special organization, right? I mean, ABL trees were just trees with like a the special organization of them being really tight and like being uh, balanced. And that's kind of what made them ABL trees. On the other side, heaps are going to have a different organization to them with the main goal being of a heap that you can get the largest or smallest. You gotta pick one when you build it. So let's just pick largest for now. So you can get the largest number on the heap and you can get that really quickly. And by really quickly, I'm saying, you normally, you know, if you look at even an ABL tree, if you look at an ABL tree and I tell you like, hey, can you uh, find me the, the, uh, the largest item in the tree? Well, you're not particularly going to be uh, benefiting too much from the tree i mean you will in a little bit because you know that the largest item in the tree is going to be like the right 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 most thing on the tree because it, it would have to be there so i would say you can access it in log end time but when you remove that item if i say to you okay cool now give me the second largest you're still gonna you know you're, it, the tree's gonna start to get all messed up and it's not gonna be uh the most efficient of trees. And furthermore, for you to actually build the tree like that, it'll take time. And so the beauty of heaps is that you can take a random list of numbers. And you know, remember with ABLs, you have to be building the tree as you go. But the cool thing about heaps is that you can just take a bunch of numbers at once, like a million numbers, do what's known as heapify, which is a really cool word, uh, my favorite word of all the algorithms. Uh, and then that will take you log n time to do. And then you are you have this sort of data structure that allows you to keep pulling the largest number or the smallest number, depending on which one you pick. You can do both, but you pick one. Now, again, I haven't shown you anything and I will explain all these things and draw and whatnot. We'll draw a lot of trees today, but I'm still trying to kind of get you uh, get motivated on why we want to do uh, heaps. So you might be asking, okay, what's the point of getting the biggest or the smallest number in the tree? Well, there's a lot of different uh, advantages to that. I mean, we didn't really go too deep into queues and stacks because they were early on in the semester. You didn't do the queue assignment because it was kind of just one of, one of too many, but we still talked about queues, right? And so the idea of queues is that you're able to sort of organize things and then, you know, first in, first out, you know, we have the circular queue. So we, we, we were able to say, if we have processes in the computer and we want to schedule them, you know, we want to schedule them in a fair manner, meaning that the ones that have been waiting the longest should go next, right? Because they've been on the longest part of the line. However, queues are limited in the fact that we can't really have BIPs per se on our queue system, right? So like the queues as we learned them so far 
are things that you, 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 you know, just like a line. You know, you, you, you enter the line, you go to the back of the line, and everybody's the same. Equality for everybody. However, as we know, sometimes for things, there are priority things. Like, you know, you, get, you go to Disneyland and you got like the Fast Pass or, or uh, well, now it's not, it's called the Genie Plus or something. I was reading about that the other day. But, you know, or also like if, you know, a club, right? Like the clubs, they have like the VIPs that can skip the line and things like that. Or even even if you have different tiers of lines, you may have like like in Disneyland, you know, the fast pass line skips the main line, but there is still a line within the fast pass, right? And like the person that's like handling the tickets, you know, or pre-check, that's a good one too. Or the one that you get when you land too, like uh, the, the fast into the country thing. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but there's another there's another sort of pre-check kind of thing that you can do to skip the passport like queue. But yeah, yeah. So like even TSA pre-check people, they can skip the line, but like there's still like a certain sort of I don't know if triage is the right word, but there's still a certain level of like okay, if like all of a sudden like a million people with pre-check show up, we're still gonna let some people in from the main line. Otherwise, like this this will be what's known as starved. Uh, that's a term in computer science you learn in 370, but you'll get that line will get starved if like all of the VIPs keep coming in and we don't let anybody in here. So like in pre-check or in Disneyland, what they do is, sure they let in all the pre-check or the fast pass people first, but even then they will at some point say like, okay, let's stop the flow a little bit, let some of the normal people in so the line actually keeps moving, and then we'll keep going with the VIPs if they still come, right? So that's known as, as avoiding a starvation, and that's a big thing you learn again in 370. But that's not really the point right now. The point right now is like, how can we sort of implement that sort of priority queue? In, and that's actually what it's called. This priority queue system uh, as a data structure. With a queue, like, we could make a bunch of queues and then like put some like temporary code that kind of like, you know, moves, you know, like let some flow from here. And then like, if, they, if like 20 people flow from here, then like let some from here and then go back to here. Like you could kind of do that with a queue. But it's not a very elegant solution. The elegant solution is going to be what's up there? Heaps. So heaps are one of the big uses of heaps are for, to make priority queues because you can you can generate your 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 uh, your queue system, but you can also assign a priority to each of those items in the queue. And so if you have something with a with a high priority, then you can you can push it all the way to the top so it cuts the line. But if it's something like middle priority, then you can kind of push it to the middle of the line. And so that's the power of, of heaps is priority queues. Uh, the other big thing that we're going to learn today, and if not, again, we'll, we'll do it next time, is heap sort. So heap sort is a sorting algorithm. In fact, I, I really should have put two titles to this, but I'm, it's not too late right now. I can still do that. Uh, we're going to learn on the, on the last of the sorting algorithms that we're going to learn this semester. Yeah, I bet you all thought you were done with quick sort, right? No, we're we're gonna learn heap sort. Heap sort is a sorting algorithm that is pretty fast. It, it's all log in across the board, just like merge sort. And uh, I would say it is definitely easier to code than heap sort, and maybe even merge sort, depending on how you code merge sort. But uh, still, merge sort kind of wins the the race there. It's more popular. But heap sort is still, I mean, it's still log in, so it's still potentially well, and log in uh, as fast. So You'll notice that like building building a, a, a sorting sorting a list with heap sort is a matter of just keep pulling the biggest item out and like you know if, because you're pulling the biggest of the next of the biggest you'll see it it'll sort it automatically. So I think merge sort is the best one because uh, I like it too because it's easy to parallelize. So nowadays with with parallel computing being such a huge thing because we kind of we kind of we kind of hitting the limit there with uh, uh, Amdahl's law and uh, you know uh, what's 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 the other guy's names? You learned this in 2019, but we're hitting the limits on like how fast we can make processors because of how small they are. Now we're getting into like quantum tunneling, which is causing issues. And so, yeah, like if we kind of have to stop doing things sequentially. We have to go parallel road. And it turns out that merge sort is really nice to parallelize. In fact, it's known as an embarrassingly parallelizable. No, embarrassingly parallel algorithm. I think that's the full term. Uh, I don't know why they say embarrassingly, but I guess it's because it's so easy to parallelize. But yeah, so I mean, I agree with you. Merge sort is my also my, my preferred algorithm. But heap sort is pretty cool too. 
Um, so yeah, okay, that's the introduction. So let's actually kind of jump in and do the practical stuff of like how this works, okay? So ultimately we're gonna be building trees and they're gonna be binary trees. So they're still gonna be of the shape of like a parent and child, uh, but you know, this is, I guess, some good news for all of you. So if you hate pointers and you just, you know, you're really having a hard time with ABL trees and like the, you know, mirror trees and all that stuff, I have good news for you. Heaps are actually always going to be a complete tree. And uh, if you don't remember what that means, it means that all of the levels of a tree are full, except for the last one, which may not be full. But if it's not full, it's all the way to the left. I think that's the, the proper rule of that. So that would be a complete tree. And then that's a complete three as well. And then like, you know, a simple version of that with actual nodes is like, that's, that's technically a complete three because this level is full and this one's not full, but everything's to the left so that way. Uh, that is also a complete three. That's a complete three. That's a complete three as well. Complete three, not a complete three because of that node. So uh, actually there will be that. Okay. So just making sure we all not remember what a complete three is. Since that was one of the things that you saw on like the video recording, not the one that was live, that was you know, back a while ago. So, uh, so okay, here's the cool thing. It's a complete tree, and furthermore, we don't actually, I mean, you can not you, you can do this, but like, it's not, it makes it way harder. So, it is this actually a special case where like, you want to implement this tree as an array. You don't want to implement it with like pointers and like, like linked list style. So if you just, you know, having a hard time with all that pointer madness, good news for you. The heap assignment that you're doing, if, I think you're doing the heap assignment. Uh, there is no pointers. It's, it's all just arrays. And uh, what does that mean for you? Well, that means it's a lot easier to debug because it's not going to sec fault when you hit a null pointer. Okay. So uh, that's the first thing. So, so just to remember how we can access things within, within the tree. Uh, let me just go ahead and create a little tree here. And again, I'm doing it like this, but I'll, I'll represent it also like a tree in a second. So let's just put in some letters in here, like hello. Hello world, I guess. Hello W. Okay. So if if you're building the tree out of this, what you're doing is you're saying, this is your root. And then the children of this is basically going to be the root index, which in this case, you know, let me write the index up here. Those are the indices or indices, I guess, the indices of this tree. So if there, if the root is an index zero or just any parent, the parent index, I believe I put this formula in one of the uh, earlier assignments, but the parent index here, you know, it happens to be zero. Okay. So in this case, if we want to find out where the children index are, you're going to take that index and then you're going to multiply it times two, which are, again, this is just zero. And then you're going to add plus one for the left child and plus two for the right child. So then, of course, this is the left child and this is the right child, right? So I guess hopefully this is review. Okay, so what if I find out, want to find out what the child of E is? Well, that is now my new parent, so that becomes one times two, which is equal to two. And then I'm going to go ahead and add one for that for the left and two for that for the right. Okay, and uh, that means that this is equal to two plus one and two plus two, which is basically going to be three and four. So this is the left child. And this is the right child of E. And uh, if I want to work backwards, which you typically don't do, but if you wanted to, so like, let's say we want to find out where W belongs. I mean, you can kind of see it's going to be right here because it's a complete three, but like, let's say we don't know that. Uh, what you can do is simply divide it by two and then remove the remainder. So do like an integer division, basically. So, you know, in Python, that's integer division, but in C++, I think you just do that, and that's integer division. So uh, if I divide it by two is basically two and a half, but we're, again, we're dropping the remainder. So that means that the parent is actually just found at this index. So like, if like we had, like, let's say this was like index 23, and we wanted to find the parent of that index, all you gotta do 
is divided by two, and you know this is going to be uh, 11 and a half, right? So it's just going to be index 11. And say we're looking at 22 divided by two, so like that's also 11. What does that mean? This is the left child, and this is the right child. Uh, whereas if we have 24, you know, because there's no remainder here, that's parent 12. So that's the index of that parent. So the way to find out whether it's a left child or a right child is going to be whether the, there's a remainder of one or zero in this in, in this case with binary trees. Okay, so that's all review. So yep, that kind of lines up because again, this should be right here because it's a complete tree, right? So it, it has to be there actually. But yeah, okay. So now that we uh, remember how to do all of that, I'm not going to be drawing much of these uh, arrays. I'm going to stick to, to drawing actual trees, but you, implementation wise, you would be doing the arrays. Okay, maybe we'll do some arrays, but like, it's easier to see the actual heapifying stuff in trees than to just see me change letters in the list of letters. Uh, so, I'm debating if I should try to do the same example or a different one. So I'm going to try to do a different one. Uh, although heaps are easy to screw up, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to go with that. So again, if after today's class you would like to see more examples, uh, go ahead and watch uh, video 18 of fall 2020. Yeah, 2020. Uh, the example of that day was actually go vote today, because probably like look at the date, right? About a year ago was the election, so so I guess that that you know subliminal <laughs> messaging to go vote. That was the uh, the thing we were sorting, but uh, yeah. So you can check that out if uh, if you want to see more examples. I do believe that I uploaded last class's video and I did put in the example for the other for the AVLs. So I'll try to do that too if I remember uh, in the description below of the YouTube video. Uh, is using heaps more efficient than binary trees? Well, heaps are a form of binary tree, and I would say just like AVLs make binary uh, search trees more efficient. Heaps are going to make your binary trees more efficient for accessing the smallest and largest number. But if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. It will after the, the lecture. So, but yes, there is a. So it's it, the, these are all binary trees. The only difference is how the tree is organized is what makes it something special. It's like think about a think about a queue. A queue in implemented in an array is just still just an array with with a fancy organization of that. You know, what makes it special is how you you are managing that piece of data uh, versus like a stack, which is also just in an array or a linked list. But that's the point that, you know, the tree is how it's stored, but how we actually, the data is organized is what makes it a heap or an AVL or, uh, yeah, those are the, the or, or, or an expression tree that we talked about those at some point. So, yeah. Uh, and of course, if that's even, one level of uh, indirection from what we're really doing because this is again still an array, right? So we got array, we got a tree, and then on top of that we got a heap. So we got three levels of like, you know, like building on what this actually represents. So yeah, but okay. So anyways, yeah, I'll try to do a completely different example. Uh, so, you know, let us go ahead. I mean, I I like letters more than numbers, but I I guess I'll do. Uh, I guess I'll do numbers since I did do letters on the example there. So, ah, we'll do some. We'll do one with numbers and one with letters. Uh, it's just letters are easier to see and not get confused between the letter and the index. But yeah, okay. So let's just do double digit numbers. Uh, well, you could, but you just you know if you you go back to the concept of like how you sort something, right? So when you sort something, you have to decide what makes something greater than something else or smaller than something else. So as long as you have, you set that rule, then you could do a jumble of them. For example, one of the ways you could do that very easily is to use the ASCII representation of that. So then you, you can use the ASCII to define if like the number one is bigger than A or if it's less than A, that kind of thing. Uh, but I don't like to mix them because I don't know the ASCII table by heart. So I don't, you know, I don't want to presume that I know that and screw it up. So let's just uh, let's just pick a bunch of random numbers here. I am going to cheat a little bit and try to make these numbers be uh, interesting because I want to see you all the possible things that can happen. So uh, that's why I'm not asking for numbers because otherwise we won't get to see 
Um, it'll be like, you know, when we're doing the ABL stuff, right? Like the first example, they didn't give us any double rotations. That kind of thing. Um, I think this will be enough numbers for the first example. Okay. So you got a bunch of numbers. And of course, these numbers are being stored in an array. Again, I'm not really showing that aspect right now, but it is being stored in an array. And by the way, uh, from an asymptotic complexity, one of the cool things about heap sort is that it is in place sorting algorithm. Okay. But again, we're not talking about heap sort just yet. We're just building a normal heap. All right. So, oh, I guess we did two examples of heaps last time. So there's actually two videos, 17 and, and 18. So check out both videos. Huh. The first one, the keyword we use for heap is Halloween. So I guess we're right on schedule with last year. So I thought we were going a little slower this semester, but uh, we are right on schedule. Awesome. Okay. Uh, anyways, going back to this. So we have to decide what we're going to be doing. And that's, you know, there are two of them. There's max heap and there's min heap. And I'm going to show you examples of both. But uh, since I chose max heap last semester to show first, I'm going to go with min heap this time. And the only difference between this is how we're going to organize things. So min heap means that you can access the smallest number. Max heap means you can access the largest number. Uh, it'll, everything will be basically the same except for that comparison. So don't worry too much about that. Okay. Now, before I go further, I want to tell you, uh, I want to, I want to just copy and paste a little definition here from last semester that, uh, that is useful to know. So when you're dealing with heaps, there's something called the heap property. Okay. So let's talk about what that is. The heap property is, well, let me read what I have here first in case you can't uh, read my handwriting. Uh, it says, the parent node, again, talking about trees, has to be, and then I have a little line there because I'll fill that in with the word uh, greater than or smaller than. Okay, so the little thing here, this can be greater or it can also be smaller. Okay, but for now, let me just read that. The parent node has to be, let's say, greater than or equal to both of its children. Okay? Now, if it's greater than or equal to both of its children, that's a max heap. If it's smaller than or equal to both of its children, it's a min heap. Okay? So, what I'm saying is that the heap property says that whenever I'm building a heap, like a tree heap, then if I have a node and this node has two children, then if it's a max heap, then this node, let's just call it node X, and let's call these node Y and node C, X has to be greater than or equal to Y, and X has to be greater than or equal to Z. Okay, so that is the, the, uh, the heap property for a max heap. Now for a min heap, I just flip that symbol around. So if we have the same example, x, y, and z, this is a min heap as long as this holds true, which is that x is going to be less than or equal to y, and x is going to be less than or equal to c. And both of these have to hold true, both. It's not like an option, okay? Now, if you have a tree that only has one child, and of course, the heap has to be a complete tree, right? So the only example that you could have with a single child is that it's the left child okay so it has to be that way so in that case you know all you care about is that left child it doesn't matter what the right child is okay so that is what's known as the max heap and the min heap and this is what's known as the heap property and i left that on the you know the empty because it depends on which one you're filling in okay so just just to uh to make sure that you understand that let me uh let me ask you some examples you know so let's say we have the numbers 21 or 24, and then 42 and 40. And let's go ahead and say we have 24 again. We have a 24, and we have a 40 here. And let's say we have 24 all along. Maybe we have one with 40, 41. Okay? So 
if I ask you, you know, let's label this one, two, three, and four. Okay. If I ask you whether the example one is a max heap, a min heap, or neither of them, uh, go ahead and try it out. So, you know, take a moment while I, uh, I'll, I'll start drawing some things in the meantime, but take a moment to, to tell me whether you think that they are max, min, uh, or, or whatnot. Okay. So just, just throw them in. I know that there's slight delay sometimes, so yeah, just blur them out. Don't worry if you get them wrong. All right. So we have, uh, but you, we have, I think, well, I don't know what the fox you said for, for that one, but yeah, Bowden64 says that one is a min. And uh, that is correct. Yes, this is indeed a min heap. The reason it's a min heap is because both children are, are greater than the parent. And so that holds the heap property. Uh, number two, uh, you are correct also that it is a min heap. And this one is, you know, I, I made it like this intentionally because I want to make sure that everybody understands that duplicates are okay. And number three, min and max. Very good. Yeah, so that was a little bit of a tricky one. I wanted to see if you guys would catch that it's both. But yes, it's it's a min heap, and it's also a max heap, technically, because they're all the same, so everything is good. And finally, the fourth one is yes, neither of them, because we have a number that's bigger, and we have a number that's smaller, so it can't be either of them. So very good, very good. Again, this is probably obvious, you know, but, you know, it's still important to make sure that we understand it. Uh, I, there is one that I want to kind of emphasize or show like a second example of. So we know this is a min heap, right? Uh, I just want to point out that if this 24 and this 40 are, in the, are flipped like that, that's still considered a valid min heap. So because remember, the property says nothing about the relation between y and z other than they have to be both smaller than x. Uh, but like it doesn't say whether y has to be bigger than z or or z has to be smaller than y. Uh, it doesn't say anything about that. It just says that they both have to be smaller. So therefore, both of these are actually okay, right? Uh, the order doesn't matter. And this is something that like coming up of ABL trees and binary search trees, where like we we I, you know I I drilled on you that like the left child is smaller and the right child is bigger. Now I'm like put that aside, clean slate. Just think about it like. Wherever, whatever the child is, left, you know, he loves his, uh, he or she loves their, uh, their, uh, their child, their child the same, all right? Whether it's the left or right child, it's like, yeah, it's like I saw, I saw a comic where uh, on, 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 on programmer humor where um, this, this, there's a little kid that comes up, and there's two kids, one of them is labeled Windows and one of them is Linux, and the Windows kid comes up, and it's like, do you love us the same? Daddy or mom, I don't remember what it was. And uh, he's like, yeah, I love you the same. And then the Windows kid goes away and the Linux is like, no, I love you a lot more. It's like, that. Eh, that's cold. But no, here, they love them the same, all right? So it doesn't matter the ordering here, okay? Unlike ABL trees. All right? So, cool. Now that we understand the heap property, it turns out that all we got to do to build a heap is just to maintain this heap property, right? So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a tree out of these numbers and I'm going to make sure that they follow this property. And what the heapify algorithm does is it, it it's a it's a eh, you could make it iterative or recursive doesn't matter but it usually is recursive. But it's a, it is an algorithm that is going to convert this tree into a heap basically. And you have to choose max or min, which we're going to try min. But we can do max afterwards with the same numbers. Uh, one thing I want to emphasize is that remember ABLs. You build the tree as you go and you balance it as you go. With a heap, you don't have to do that. In fact, you don't want to do that. Bad things, it'll, it'll slow the algorithm down. Here, it's like, it's okay. Just give it all to me at once. I'll heapify it at once, and then you'll be good to go. And the beauty of this is that heapify takes log n time. That's really fast. Like, think about it. No sorting algorithm can do faster than n log n. And while you can use something like an ABL to like to like find out what the biggest number is, you know, because it's log and height, you still got to build the entire tree, which will take time. So how long is it going to take? Well, on average, each insertion of a tree takes log and time plus balancing time. Uh, but that log and time is kind of growing as the tree grows. So ultimately, it's going to be slower because this just this is a one time operation that you do with the entire data at once and it's log and time. So 
it's fast. Faster than just like having your list and having to look through the list to find the, the biggest number. It's fast. So very cool. All right. Yeah. Water in Spanish. Okay. So, all right. So let me go ahead and just build the tree out of this first. So let me just copy and paste this. And again, how do I build it? You know, you just, well, it's already built. It's just the computer sees it as a tree. But for us, it's a lot easier to actually draw the tree out when you're doing the algorithm, especially like on a test. You don't just want to stick to doing it from the array. That's hardcore. Uh, if you can, you're more than welcome to. But, you know, for me, it's like, I got to I gotta, I gotta see the tree to feel the tree, you know. I need to see the shape of it so I can do things right. Um, let me fix that 99. Oh, it's a min heap. Hmm. Nah, that's okay. All right, I like it like that. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing my heapify. That takes O log n time. Okay. So how does heapify work? Heapify works by you by basically converting every sort of subtree into the heap property. And it the way the algorithm works is going from the smallest subtrees and then sort of building up from that and growing okay so like you know if you remember like the even though i i don't say you remember but like i actually never played legend of zelda but uh i do know the the zelda symbol right so if you think about the zelda symbol like this is a smaller tree right and then this is like the bigger tree of that so what we're going to be doing is kind of like building this zelda symbol we start out by working on the subtrees so we start out working on the green one here and then we also do work on the subtree here. And then once we got them both, then we can actually work on the big thing here. All right. Well, there's technically nothing here, but you get what I mean. Like that. Okay. So again, I'm trying to do as many different sort of metaphors and whatnot to make sure you all get it. But if not, here's just the straight of what we're going to be doing. Okay. So we got our tree. And when you heapify, uh, what you're basically doing is you're starting from the leaf nodes and because it's a complete tree, just start with the last item on there and just kind of draw a triangle around it. So it makes it easy to visualize that we're going to have to heapify that. We're also going to have to heapify this piece. And then that's going to be sort of like stage one of the heapify. Stage two of that is going to be this tree. Now, why is this tree stage two? Well, that's because you can see that this is connected between both trees, right? So we got to heapify the, the uh, I should have used a different color than black for that layer. Let me try that. So let me, let's use uh, blue. Okay, so we got the blue one. We got the black, the, black, the red one, okay? So we got to do the blue one first so that 11 is in the right spot. And then we can do the red one. This one we can do, be, you know, after the red, but you could also do it like right now. It doesn't really matter that one. But, however, you have to do both of them before you can do this brown one because it's shared, you know. This one's shared and this one's shared, okay? So, when you're coding this, what you do is you start out by looking at the end of the tree and you find out who the parent of that node is. See if it has uh, a, uh, a left and right child or just a left child. So then we're just going to have a right child because otherwise it would not be a complete tree. And now do the heapification or heapify, which basically means look at, in this case, at this, just these two numbers, and tell me if that is basically a min heap. And in this case it is. 99 is larger than 11, which means that the child node is larger than the parent. So we are good to go on that, all right? Moving on, however, we have to do this one or again we could do the red one but uh you're kind of working your way backwards from the end of the list so as you can see the 40 appears first right see the 40 is right there all right so we got to heapify that so to heapify it again what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at the three items in this case the only time you only see two items or or or, or yeah two items is you you never see just one item you see either three or two and the only time you're going to see two, like we just did, is the last, last, last item on the list. 
and that's only if it's if it's like an odd number of items basically i think uh the outer ribbon two four six eight no even i guess even uh in this case but um really two four six eight yeah we have we have an even number of numbers uh so i guess odd is when it gets it full always oh yeah that's because the root is one item yeah that's why it's odd yeah it makes sense okay but uh <laughs> i like the the like the Illuminati triangle thing that you posted, but yeah. So yeah, basically, uh, odd, odd number means that you're 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 gonna be okay. There's always gonna be two 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 uh two ch two children for every node, and when it's an odd number, then uh, then it's going to. Or again, oh, okay, I said I said that backwards. When it's an odd number of of nodes, then you're gonna you're gonna be okay in that uh, that every 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 heap string triangle thing you do will have three items but if it's an even number like here then the last last one's just gonna be like this okay not that it matters much but when you're coding it just be aware of that okay you know don't try to like swap null and be like oh this is like this has null in it so it has like infinity or something in it so that's gonna like screw things up you know you gotta make sure like you you set this to something to not get confused okay but anyways moving on 49 25 and 40 basically make that into a min heap which means in this case, pick the smallest of the two children because in this, it happens to be that both of these children are smaller than the parent, right? But if you, if you don't pick the smallest one, so let's say you pick the 40 and you swap the 40 and the 49, that's not really going to achieve a min heap, right? Uh, it, you still got the 25 that's smaller. So the easiest way to do this algorithmically in my code is to look at all three numbers and pick the smallest one and make that the parent. And just swap that which whichever one you're doing. So in this case, it will be 49 and 25. After you do that one swap, this subtree should be good to go. Now that's all you're doing for now. Uh, you'll see that it'll be a different story as we go further. But like in this case, because 49 and 40 are leaf nodes, they have no children. That's all you gotta do. That one swap. And you can call it a day on that and say, okay, this is now heapified. All right, we can move on to the next one. The next one is going to be the red one. So for this red one, again, you're going to look at the three numbers and you're going to pick the smallest of them if it's not already already set. If it already was set, then you'd be like, okay, I'm good to go moving on. But it may not be set. And this is where you're working from the bottom up because like this 11 could have been a 99 before and got swapped in. But in this case, it was the same, but it could have been swapped in. So that's why you're working your way up from the bottom. So in this case, the 11 is the smallest of all of them. So we are going to go ahead and put a 48 and bring up the 11. Here's the thing though. In this case, when you do this swap, because there's a, there's another tree beneath it, the one with, with, uh, with 99 and what was 11 before, you actually have to check that tree to make sure that what you put there didn't screw it up. Now, in this case, it didn't, but uh, but you'll see later with the 21 that that'll do it. But yeah, you would have to check it and if not, swap it. But for now, we are okay. That is now considered heapified and we can move on to the brown triangle, the one with 21. So now, again, we look at the three numbers, the 21, the 11, and the 25, and we're gonna pick the smallest one. The smallest one is actually the 11. So we bring the 11 up and we bring the 21 down. Now here you actually get to see what's happening that, uh, well, not what, ha what can happen, which has happened here, which is before the red one was okay. But after we did the swap with the 21 and the 11, this is no longer a heap, right? Because the 14 is smaller. So what you do whenever you do these swaps and you got something that was beneath it, you gotta check those again. So in this case, you have to go back and, and check the uh, the red triangle to make sure that you didn't break it when you did the swap here, okay? You don't need to check the blue one on the right side because you didn't touch it. So, you know, it's kind of like when ABL trees, you know, when you do a rotation on one side of the tree, but then you don't touch the other one, you don't need to recompute the height. You just need to recompute the height of what you actually modified. Same here. You don't need to recheck this one because you didn't touch it. The one you gotta recheck is this one because you did touch it. You actually swapped the 11 and the 21. So as it happens, in this case, you do actually have to fix it. And you got to, again, find the smallest one, which is 14. 
So you are going to swap the 14 with the 21. Because you swap the 14 and the 21, you can stop your checks there for the left side. So you don't need to check anything with the 48 because this is already going to be okay because it, you didn't swap that 48. However, if 21 had children in it, you would have to keep checking down there to make sure that you know there wasn't something there. What would be an example of something that would have broken it? Let's just imagine that there was a 15 here. You know, by swapping the 14 and the 21, then now the 21 has to actually go down there. Okay? Uh, when you see numbers go down like this, so like the 21 went from being the root all the way to the bottom there, we call that a, a bubble down procedure. Uh, so just just a, just a terminology that you want to know. Okay? But yeah, that's it. You have completed the heap at this point because you don't have any more trees to look at. And so you can consider this uh, tree to be heapified. And in this case, it's a min heap. So you're like, yay, okay. I mean, the tree looks cool, but like, now what? Okay, well, congratulations, you made a heap. What that means is that, you know, basically the numbers on the top are probably going to be the smallest numbers. Well, the root is always going to be the smallest number because that's what you just did. But the other one's not particularly, right? Like you can kind of see how, like, you know, the children of 11 are the second largest numbers. But, like, when you get to the third layer, like, you can see that, like, we have a 21, and, but we also have, like, a 49 and a 40 and a 48. So, like, if you just kind of were like looking at this in level order, you can see that like the 21 and the 48, you know, like the 21 should go first. That doesn't matter. Not the way this is structured because the heap is only guaranteeing you that the smallest number is the root. But, but you can still get the second smallest and so on if you do what is known as a removal from a heap. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do that. So now that we build a heap, and again, we're going to go back and build a max heap out of this too, but let's just keep going with the main heap for now. So now that we have this, uh, sorry, I looked at the timer and it threw me off. Uh, but no, no, we still got, we, we still got time. I got half an hour. So. It's, this is two hours plus here. So it's like, it's 6.42. I'm like, huh? Is it? <laughs> what? But no. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick with this example. And we're going to remove each item from the heap, which is one of the big uses of it. Okay. So like, imagine like right now, this is your like line for like, for like your like DMB, okay? And the numbers represent the priority associated to them. So if right now like a BIP came along, so let's just say that was like an insertion to our heap, how would that work? Okay, so I guess we'll do an insertion. So you have to add it to the next available spot that keeps it a complete three. So like that's right here. And in this case, if we have a BIP, you know, this BIP might be like, 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 uh, like super important, you know, like maybe, uh, I don't know. Or actually, well, well, here, this was more ethically correct. So I don't say like, oh, super important person came to DMB and like got at the front. Let's say that they have, a, uh, you know, like like a handicap or, or, or I don't know if that's a, the correct term nowadays, but like, you know, the, the, they, they, they have a, they have a, they're like older person or something that requires extra assistance. And so they don't, they, you know, they're not required to wait the longest line. Okay. So, we, but like, you know, we're like, okay. We're going to give them some priority, but we're not going to like be like, please go right in and like, kick somebody else who's already like being attended. OK, uh, a senior. Yeah, that's probably a better term. OK, so like maybe you have senior priority. Senior priority is not going to be like super, super high priority, but it's going to be like not waiting the full time. OK, so now we're going to basically say, OK, you know, we're going to give him a priority of like 15. All right. So with 15, that's going to be like a middle tier priority. And so what's going to happen is it's, you know, you got to, once you insert something, you have to bubble that number up to its right spot. And so in this case, you just rerun the heapify algorithm, basically. Uh, so you can see that 15, well, you rerun it with, with a twist. You only modify the things that, that, that require to be modified as you correct the number to the, to the spot it belongs to. In this case, because it's 15, all that's going to happen is the 48 and the 15 got to swap. Okay, but let's say that that number was maybe not a 15. Maybe now it's like it's a senior, but also they like they know the guy that like runs the DMB or something. <laughs> and so they're like, okay, look, I'll hook you up even better. 
So we like we give them a 10 as a priority. Okay. Uh, and then when you insert it this time around, you know, the 48 is going to be bubbled down. The 10 is going to be bubbled up, but it's not enough to stop there because you got to keep checking up before the, you know, when you put there, 15 was okay within the red triangle, but now it's still not okay. So you go further up. So then this bubbles up here, 10 and 14. You technically check the brown one just to make sure, but you're good to go because 10 is smaller than 11. All right. So let's say that another person comes along and this time it's like, like, uh, you know, I don't know, ex-worker of the DMV, knows everybody there, you know, is a senior, he retired, like everyone loves him, you know, and he, he has like, he has like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a thing he has to run to. He's like, hey, yo, yo, hook me up with the, like, just going right in and out, you know, and so, you know, he, he goes in and he's like, okay, we got you, you know, we're going to put you up, or yeah, it could be like, let's just say it's, uh, uh, Oh, you know what? I screwed that up. You're right. Good call on that. It turns out that our previous uh, uh, friend of the DMB owner actually got the best priority of that. Because it turns out that, yeah, 10 does go higher. So technically 10 goes there and 11 goes there. Uh, why do we have two 11s now? I think something went wrong. I think that used to be a 15 or something. What happened to the 14? Th oh, no, this was the 14. Okay. I was like, the number went down. But yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. All right. Sorry. My math is not good today. I, I uh, Somehow I, I didn't get the 11 and the 10 right. Yeah. But okay. There you go. So so I guess that might have actually been like the president or something that like got hooked up to go to the front or something. Okay. But yeah. So now he's all the way to the front and he can be served next. Okay. So um, just to make sure that we understand that, let's just throw in one. Oh, no. Let's leave it like that, actually. Okay, so now we got a heap that has one more number. Now, if we want to reflect that on the array version of this, uh, what that would look like would have been like 10, 11, 25, 14, 21, 49, 40, 99, and 48. Okay, so. Just to show you one example with the array, let's go ahead and insert one more number in here. Let's go in and put in something that's going to bubble up, but maybe not all the Yeah, we'll put something all the way up. So let's just say that uh, that's, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have, hmm, yeah, let's just go and throw in like a four or something in there. Okay, so like super high priority, like even higher priority than president now, like probably like the director of the NSA or something, okay? Because he's just like, yeah, man. Everybody's scared of, like, secret, I don't know, something. Whatever, okay? Uh, what, so, yeah, he goes in there, he, like, hacks the system so he can go in the front or something, okay? So, yeah, all right? So he goes in there like that, and then, um, what do you mean by 32? Ah, uh, I don't know, something up with 32. Yeah, okay, well, yeah. Anyway, so goes in there with the four, and so now we got to bubble that up. So the first triangle, we got a brand new triangle technically now. That's uh, this one, but there's only two of them because, you know, even number, I guess, this time. And so that four, again, I want to show you what it looks like on the array. So that's the whole point of putting it in there. So let me just shrink this array a little bit so we have space for it. What you do is you just throw it at the end. So you put a 40, uh, four there. And so now what you want to do is you want to check that. So how are we going to check what index to check it with if we're just looking at array-wise? I know you can do this with the drawing, but now it's when we got to make sure we can do it with the array because that's what you code, right? Okay, you take that index of 9 and you divide it by 2. So 9 divided by 2 is going to be 4, right? And the remainder of 1, so 4. And the remainder of 1 tells you that it is going to be a huh, left child. Yeah, okay. Remainder of 1 is left child, remainder of here was is, is right child okay i might have said that backwards earlier then i don't know but yeah okay so uh or let's say so you're one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah whatever i think everything's okay so we put in the four we want to see who the parent is so we divide it by two indexing starts at one no 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 you start at zero i mean you can you can actually start at a one 
but then you got to modify your your uh your uh your plus one and plus two to make it plus zero plus one so yeah so i think it's okay we'll see let's see if we'll see if it gives us that but no it is giving us that look at that so nine divided by two is going to be that four and a half so it is giving us four so it is working and if we do the parent of 21 that's that's divided by two uh that's 11. uh that one's that one's not doing do we copy the numbers 11 25 14 21 49 40 99 48 4. Mm. Well, technically, one times two is two, plus one and plus two. That I mean that is giving us four. But why is it not? So maybe we should be subtracting. Mm. We should be subtracting one before we do the division. I think that will I will offset this weirdness. So we have eight becomes a seven divided by two is three okay so maybe maybe yeah so let's try so when we're going up so before i just said to divide by two uh but we just got lucky with that example i guess when you're starting from zero subtract one from that so if you have a node and you want the parent go ahead and take node index minus one and then divide that by two okay if and only if indexing starts at zero if it starts as one you don't need to do that minus one nastiness okay so yep i guess you would have figured that out when you were coding it anyways you would have given it off by one so yeah okay so uh I think it, let's just triple check that. So now nine becomes eight divided by two is four. That's okay. Four minus one is three divided by two. And again, make sure your this division is an integer division. So like throw away the remainder. So in this case, three divided by two is just one point five. So one. So that's that's also good. And then let's see if it works with zero though. Uh, uh, yeah. One minus one is zero divided by two is zero. Okay, it works with zero too. Uh, let's see if it works with 48. That becomes 7. 7 divided by 2. Again, this would be 3.5, so 3. So Yeah, okay, that works. So that one's the one you do for uh, if index starts at 0. If it starts at 1, like you were saying, then it's just easier because then you just do node index divided by 2. And then for for actually inserting like this so from going from root to child what i said is okay just remember that if you're doing it with index this is for index starting at zero as well if you wanted to start at one then you don't you just do times two and times two plus one okay so uh, i'll write that somewhere here just so you all remember so uh to find children don't lose them first in the first place. But if you lose them, I guess, uh, if and only if index starts at zero, then it's uh, parent index, which I'll just say, yeah, parent index times two plus one. And then let me just copy and paste that to make it faster. And then parent index times c plus two for the left and for the right, okay? Uh, and for the indexing that starts at one, if you decide to do it that way, which is, yeah, that's fine too. So you're working on MATLAB or something. If index starts at one, then this becomes easier. Like that, okay? So I'm glad we ran into that problem so that you all can see that, because otherwise I can. I already know this would have been an issue, you know, breaking code when coding it. But yeah, okay. So, all right. So, anyways, how do we do this heapify now that we figure that out? Okay, so in your code, you know, when you insert a number, 
you see that you find the index, of course. We run we run the formula, so that becomes nine minus one divided by two. That becomes a four. So now we've identified that four is the parent of that node. If we want to find out if uh, you know what, if it has another children, which it shouldn't because we just inserted it. But if we did for some reason, then you know multiply times two is four times eight plus one, which does get us back to here, and plus two, which should get us out of bounds, which you can keep the size somewhere. So you you know keep keep because you know you you don't want to allocate this to the exact size because when you insert you have to resize it. So you, what you do is you allocate it to like a you know like some number like 32, and if you fill it up you make it 64 or whatever. Uh, just keep kind of like how you do in a stack. Keep a thing that points to the last item of it so that you know where to enter and where the last item is. And then the rest is just garbage, okay? So in this case, you would keep an int that holds the number 9, and that means it's the last item in the current uh, heap, okay? But yeah, so that way you, you confirm that there is no right child. So when you do that, you compare those two numbers. You say which one's bigger and which one's smaller. In this case, 21 is the larger one, so we swap that. like that and then you know that that's okay uh, and there's no nothing after it so you know that's that's heapified so it, what we've done is we swap these two so I'll do it here too next you're going to go ahead and find out what the parents of this is so again we did that math nasty math 4 minus 1 divided by 2 so that's 4 minus 1 is 3 divided by 2 which is going to be uh, 1.5 so 1 so that means that the parent of that is going to be the 11. If you want to find out who the children are, so because we need both children in this case, just uh, do the math the other way around. So 1 times 2 uh, is 2 plus 2, and uh, in this case also plus uh, 3, right? I'm sorry, plus 1, right? So again, we're doing we're doing uh, this one, right? So we we're taking one and then multiplying times two plus one and plus two so one times two plus one one times two plus two that is going to be equal to three and equal to four so we know that these are the three that we're looking at pick the biggest of the three so in or sorry pick the smallest of the three so in this case that's the four so we're going to swap the four with the parent always swap it with the parent i guess which how do you know that smallest number of the three in terms of indices what we've done there is swap this and this okay so when you do that because it got swapped from the one that came uh, from the right side technically you should check it you should check to make sure they didn't break it however it's not as critical this time around because it's already heapified and you're just inserting one item so you don't need to check it to optimize it but um, you know I guess if you want to be safe you can it's just unnecessary so yeah uh, yeah as far as I understand it okay so now you're going to look at that in relation to its parent so again 1 minus 1 is 0 divided by 2 is still 0 so the 3 that we're interested in are going to be 0 and then 0 times 2 is 0 plus 1 which is this one and then 0 times 2 is 0 plus 2, which is this one. So pick the smallest one to put on the root. So that means the 10 and the 4. Again, I'm not doing anything different. I'm just doing this like now using the array, just so that when you code it, this is how you would like conceptualize that coding. And there you go. Uh, you're good to go now. Everything is nice. This thing is heapified. Okay. So that's how you insert, and this is how you would do it coding-wise. Again, I'm showing you just the tree stuff, but again, when you code it, you have to do, you know, like an array. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, now you can you can kind of convert that idea of a heap into actual code. So yeah, it's not like I said, it's not particularly hard. And the beauty of this is that it's an array. So like if you screw up the math, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a number wrong. It's not going to crash. You can, I mean, just make sure you add an if statement so you don't go out of bounds just to make sure it doesn't crash from that. But it's usually not going to crash. Whereas, like, it's so easy to crash things with the AVLs and whatnot because they're actually pointers. And all, all it needs is one null pointer access that you do and uh, trying to direct as a null. And 
whole thing explodes. But anyways, that's how you insert things. Uh, let's talk about removing things from the heap, okay? We have 15 minutes, so it does look like we will definitely play with heaps next time. Uh, but we'll do a max heap. So I want to at least try to do the removal stuff. And then, uh, yeah, so I guess maybe it was a good thing. We'll, we'll talk more about heaps or next time. But uh, yeah, okay. So let me just copy and paste our current heap. Which is that. And then let us remove it. Okay. So, how do we remove things from a heap? We know that when we remove things from a heap, in the case of this, which is a min heap, it's going to be the smallest item of the he of the of the uh, heap, basically. Okay, which is the root. So, there's a lot of ways that you could think that you could do this. Like, oh, you know, let me just take that out and then like bring up one of the childs because I know those are the biggest ones. But uh, it turns out that's not the most efficient way, and like. Now this is hardcore. I actually don't know. I've never, I haven't really read the academic papers behind why the way you, that I'm going to show you is the most efficient way. But uh, you're more than welcome to research that on your own. Uh, but but basically, it turns out that the best way to remove something from a heap and then still maintain it as a heap, which means you're going to have to put the second largest number. It's going to have to bubble up to the tree. The best way to do it as unintuitive as it sounds is to actually swap the root with the last item of the heap so in this case it's a 21 so put that up there and then put the root down here and after that swap fix the tr fix the heap basically running the heapify stuff you're like but like that seems so inefficient because like if something was at the bottom of the heap and you put it on the root, it's got to probably go all the way back down, like m more than likely. And I, I, I agree with you in a way, but uh, it turns out that like this system will work over the, over a longer period. It will, it will, it will still be that log of n really fast process and trying to do some fancy science that like brings these guys up and then fixes that part. That apparently is slower in the long run, okay? So you just have to believe me with that um, um, until you research it on your own to really prove it, which, you know, if you want to. If not, then that's okay. I'm not so bothered by it that I researched it, but, uh, you know, when you take analysis of algorithms, they're probably gonna go over heaps again. So uh, I would like you to ask your professor, whoever you take it with, why that's the, like, just flat out be like, yo, can you please explain to me why that's the case like give me the proof and then uh, put them on the spot and then see what happens but don't tell them that I told you to put them on the spot just uh, do it anyways and we'll see what happens they're probably just gonna tell you like no we're not doing that but hey you know maybe he goes into like a hardcore math proof and uh, spends a full class on it so you get to relax and watch science happen so it'll be cool okay so anyways, I just redo, redo this because like it was getting way too colorful to handle. But anyways, after you do the swap, then, you know, just even though this is still in the tree, technically, it's not because you removed it, right? That's the whole purpose is you removed the smallest item. So you can like think about this as being erased. Uh, what this would be in practice would be in your array. You keep that index that points to the last item of the heap. You would just abstract one from that. So like. The item in the heap itself would remain the same, but uh, you just don't think of it like as part of the heap anymore. Just remember, like when you deallocate stuff, you know, in 202, when I, when I, when you, when you take 202 and I'm, I'm, you know, whoever you took it with, you know, they tell you like, deallocating isn't the same thing as deleting, right? You can still access things if you have dangling pointers and things like that. Think of it like that way and it's the same way here that like, you delete stuff, but it's still there. You just don't consider it part of what you're, valid data set is. So 21, 10, 25, 14, 11, 49, 40. Yeah, gotta make it smaller so we fit the last two. Or three actually, because we still have that, so. Okay, and then we have like the four. 
So all that happens here is like my index that points to the last valid item of the heap, I minus one it. So that's still there, but it's just invalid data at this point. Okay? So you pulled you pulled out the four, you know, that's the next person to pass to the, to the counter or whatever. Now you just gotta fix the heap. And the way you fix it is instead of bubbling up like before when you insert something, you bubble down. So you start out looking from the top triangle, this one, and, and basically pick the smallest item of the three, which is probably going to be one of the children. Like, pretty sure unless you're looking at a, a heap that is like containing every single item being the same, it's probably going to have to do some sort of swap. Uh, so yeah, uh, and yeah, in this case, you, you pick the smallest one. So there's a 10. So you swap the 10 with the 21. Next, because you swapped 10 and 21, it means that whatever was here on this side here, let me pick a different color, whatever was on, on this section of the heap is probably messed up. So you got to verify it. How do you verify it? You're going to check the, the subtree right there and see if that got broken. And as you see, it did get broken. So you got to bubble this down further by picking the smallest of the two. So that will be this one. So 11 comes up, 21 comes down. Because there's no more children to this, I mean, technically there is a four here, but we just don't consider it part of this, right? And when you're checking your index and you see that it's not part of the tree anymore. So for all sense and purposes, it's gone. So but because there's no children to that or no valid children, then you're done. If if it had happened that you had swapped this number with this one, then you would have had to check that subtree as well. But we don't have to in this case. OK, so after you do that, your heap is back to being a heap, like a, like a nice heap. And as you can see, the root contains the, the second smallest item of the original heap or the current smallest item of the existing heap. So that's the next person that you want to pass. That's the next priority ticket. So let's just take it out again. So you know, do a couple of these. Just until we uh, hit the time period. So we're going to take out the 10 this time. So what do we do? We swap it with the last item, as I said. Swap it there. And so, of course, now this 10 is out of the heap, right? So just remember, before we took out a 4, so I'm just going to keep track of that basically by, uh, you know, well, I guess I'll redraw how the heap looks because some things did move around. So it's, it'll be quicker just to draw what the array is like. So we got a 48, 11, 25, 14, 16, 17, 21. Trying to go smaller so they fit this time. 10. And then... The four is still technically there, right? So except now this is the last valid item of this because this is gone, snapped out of existence. Okay. So now that we start the 48, we got to fix it. And yes, yes, that's a good question. Very important part of this heap thing is that you can never, ever, ever remove anything but the root. That's the rule. It's, it's kind of like, think about queues. That's the same rule, right? Like you can't, when you dequeue something, you're removing the front of the line. You can never take something out. Now, just like a queue, you could write a function that could like remove like the top third item or whatever. But that's not like a pure heap, right? And if you if you don't follow the pure heap rules and you remove something else, you can do that and then like call your heapify algorithm to fix it. And that, but uh, which should take log and time. But you're not you're losing efficiency on the heap at that point. So if you want the fastest heap possible, then yes, you are you are required to only remove the root. And that's typically how heaps are implemented by an operating system or whoever's using a heap or whatever uh, to only remove the roots. So, yeah, good question. All right, so we got the 48, so let's just swap it to where it belongs. 11 is the smallest one, so we're going to bring the 11 up, 48 down. We picked the smaller one, which is the 14. I like that we picked the 14 there because now you can see that because of that, we are going to have to check that subtree down here and uh even though nothing changed we still have to check it so you're like oh, okay nothing changed so no more changes there but we did have to look at it whereas with the 21 before we didn't because there was no children okay so let's just uh well we still got six minutes so we can do two or three more but uh yeah throw in the questions if you got them too Otherwise, I'll just keep doing examples until we run out of time. Like I said, you can check out the videos too uh, for more examples. But I will I will continue examples next time 
because uh, I do want to show you the maxi, which is the same thing here. It's just that pre-property changes, right? So it'll be the biggest number instead of the smallest. It's like saying, hey, I just showed you quick sort. Now let me just show you quick sort again, but instead of sorting in descending order, sort of ascending order. It's the same thing, but it's still good to do an example of it. So we'll do that next time. Probably won't spend the full class on it, but we will spend some time. So again, we're going to remove the next smallest. So that's the 11. So we put the 11 at the last spot and we swap that around to the front. like that and then technically this is gone from that this tree is all fully gone uh, and then the list currently will look like 99 14 25 48 21 49 40 11 10 4 when well, you notice something about that as we're removing things what are we doing there we're actually sorting and this is in place right this is the same array even though we're just not looking at that because it's not part of the heap, we're actually creating a sorted list in descending order. That's that's it. That's what heap sort is. Heap sort is literally just taking out the smallest number one at a time. And because each one takes log n time and you're doing n of them, you're getting your n log n. So that's why heap sort takes n log n, right? So there's no magic behind heap sort. It's literally just taking the minimum each time and you build it. If you want, if you want to build it in the other direction, then you do the max heap. But you can also just flip it when you're finished too. So uh, you just learned heaps for it. Slipped it in there basically. But uh, yeah, okay. So we gotta fix that. Uh, we gotta fix the heap because we just removed the 11 and put a 99 here. So 14 is the uh, smallest of the three there. So that goes there. And then we gotta fix the purple tree because 99 and 21 have to swap. However, after that, there's no children, so we don't need to check anything else. So if we want to do it again, we want to take out the next number. The next number is going to be 14, right? So what do we swap the 14 with? The last item down here. So 40 and 14, and now the 14 is gone. So the 14 is here, and the rest of the tree is 40, 21, 25, 48, 99. 49, right? So as you can see, it is it is like it is literally building a sorted version of this. That's heap sort. But also, it's it's following the priority queue. If I at any time during this process, I can insert new numbers, like new people come into the line, and depending on the priority that I give them, it's just going to put them there. If I don't want them to have any priority, I can just assign a bigger number than the last number that's there, which is just a really big number or whatnot. So, or you can just clone one of the numbers at the bottom of the tree. So like if you wanted to add something with no higher priority than what is currently there, just look at what the last number is, which in this case is this 49, and just insert another 49 there. And that will give it the same priority that it, that it currently has. Uh, if you want higher priority than that, give it a smaller number than this. If you want lower priority than that for some reason, uh, and you want to guarantee this lower priority, give it a bigger number than that. And uh, you'll be okay as well there. But uh, that's kind of by default, because even if you give it the same number, it'll still be lower priority. But yeah, that's it. So uh, maybe we'll pick up from here next time and, and finish removing all the items so you can see that. But uh, I'll probably stop for there just because uh, we got two minutes and I don't want to have to like cut off me trying to heapify this. But as you can see, as the heap gets smaller, there's less uh, heapifying to do. So the last three is just going to be like one check that we have to do. Right now we are, we're down to potentially two checks, right? One for the red and then one for the purple, whether it's that purple or this blue one here. So it gets smaller and smaller until it's empty. But yeah, that is basically heaps. Like I said, it's not particularly a hard thing. You just kind of have to learn it and know them, you know, just, just a little bit. But it's easy to code too, so it's it's a relief compared to something like ABLs. So like I said, that wraps up this week for 302. Uh, next week we are going to be looking more at heaps and then we're going to start hashing. So probably next class we'll do like half the class on heaps and then introduce you to hashing. That will take us the rest of the week. And then uh, after that, I do believe that we're getting close to the second midterm. So it might be on the week after that. So that would be like November. Uh, I think November 8th possibly, or November 10th. Uh, 
one of those two days. We'll see. I think it, I think it pl originally planned for eight, but as we get closer, we'll figure that out. So I, I got to check. I think I have hashing as a last topic in the midterm. So we got to make sure we get through hashing first. But uh, yeah, just keep that, keep that in mind that that is coming up at some point. So you can keep up with everything. All right. But until next time, thank you all for watching. I hope the video was okay. I have to download it now and uh, upload it again. But yeah. All right then. So uh, thank you all for watching. I hope everything is good. Yeah. All right. We got somebody said something. Great. I want to make sure that like the stream was still live. So yeah. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. All right. Good luck with your assignments. And uh, remember, the ABL one is going to be moved a couple of days too. So the deadline that you have for ABL will be a little bit later. Okay. So I'll do that at some point. So. Yeah, but bye everyone. Have a good night.